Hello, hello, and welcome back to the channel. As most of you know, I'm Topher. And for those of you who don't know and just randomly decided to click on the video, welcome to the channel. I'm Topher. Thank you for stopping by. So we're here to do a reaction, and we're diving back into Word of Honor. We're diving into episode 25. Um, yeah, I just finished watching episode 24, and I, 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 I wanted to see more. So that, that's, that's pretty much it. That's the intro. So we're going to dive in and just see where this one takes us. I love how much of this episode was dedicated to Jiang and Kao Ning's relationship. Um, because since it is such a long series so many episodes and each episode is you know a substantial amount of time there's plenty of time there's no reason why we can't explore some of these other characters like there are some series that i watch where it's like i would love to get more of the side characters more of the storyline um hell i was just talking when i was reacting to episode three or four of the director who buys me dinner um how there was a character whose storyline I'm not sure how it's going to fit in with our main um, what their characterization what their character arc how it's going to fit in with the main couple's storyline um, but I feel like it has to have some relevance because that series is one where it's such a short number of episodes and each episode's only like 10-15 minutes long so it's like there's not enough time to really explore those characters without it having some relevance to this core you know ship that we we're focusing on um but this is you know very much the opposite we've got so much time to explore all this stuff so i'm glad that we are actually making use of that time and while yes i love the time that we spend with ki jing and um zishu and all that um i like that we are world building we're world building and everything is not about them and that's one of my for me that's one thing that makes a really great entertaining series to watch um when if i were to take out the main character or if i weren't to focus on the main character and their storyline the show is still entertaining the show is still watchable so even if i took out kijing and zishu and everything that is involved with them out of this there's still so much in this world there's so much world building that they've done so many great characters and they're still exploring these characters and they're fleshing them out they're giving them they're humanizing you know characters you thought were, were just one-dimensional bad guys and they're giving so much layer and it's so many layers and it's just i love it i love it so i love how much time we spent with um waning and jiang here because and we spent last episode a fair amount of time with them as well too but i feel like we spent more with them in this episode than we did any of the other characters um i feel like it was primarily like we're focusing on them and what they're doing and then we would flash to other people and then we're focusing on them and then we'd flash to other people um but yeah it's it's just such an entertaining series like I'm, i'll talk some more about the specifics of the storyline in a second but like just the series itself is so entertaining and it reminds me of like some of my favorite just fantasy series sci-fi series whatever um that i you know grew up watching like buffy the vampire slayer i've mentioned it so many times it's one of my all-time favorite series i have the entire dvd box set i've had it since i was like in college and whatnot like i love that series one of my favorite things to watch on youtube is buffy verse reactors i love discovering a new buffy verse reactor who i thoroughly enjoy and just watching their journey through the through the series i've probably watched gone through the series like four or five times with various different reactors um and i've watched the series on my own multiple different times because i just love the series and this is one of those series where yeah it's it's a long series but so much happens and it's just so entertaining and it's just it's just a well done series it's a very well done series even without the romance if you took the romance aspect out of it it's still such a good damn series and i love that um yeah, about uh, Waining and Jiang, like at first when Waining found, I'm not going to remember, I'm not going to remember their names, um, Liv, Tiv, Grandma and Grandpa who, who kidnapped baby girl, basically, um, first came across him like, oh, we have to rescue her, we have to rescue her, and 
similarly to when um, Jiang saw um, Gao's subordinate getting basically bullied and handled in the courtyard last episode, you could see that there's part of her that wanted to step in and intervene, um, but there's also that part of her that's worried about self-preservation because that's basically how she was raised and how she's grown up self-preservation if someone tries to attack you 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 kill them first um make sure you make it out a lot sorry i didn't mean to hit my microphone escape you know just self-preservation so there's that part of her that wants to step in and do the right thing because being around Wei Ning and just all the shenanigans we've seen happen throughout the last 25 episodes um you've seen that character development in her where it's like she she is there is humanity in her yes she's she's grown up and been raised in certain ways and she's got certain mindset and there are certain things that are just second nature to her at this point but there is still that humanity buried deep down that's making its way to the surface the more she's hanging out with Wei Ning, the more she's you know saw Cheng Ling and all this like the humanity is starting to make its way to the surface and like she said there towards the end like she's been a devil but she wants to find a way back into the hu human world or the mortal world however she phrased it and then Qi Jing was also saying similar things when he was talking to the, the the tombstones of you know master it's like yes I may be a devil but like I she's found something that has made her want to regain her humanity in a sense and she wants to live with him she wants to be with him she she loves him she loves him and she wants to be with him um but you know she's she's been worried for episodes on upon episodes about her identity being you know being discovered about what counting is gonna think if he finds out who she is she that's the last thing she wants because she doesn't want him to see her in this nasty dark evil light he thinks she is this sweet perfect blah 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 like yes obviously he knows it. she's got her flaws she's got her history this that and the other but he he sees the good in her he sees the good in her and she does not want to do something to tarnish that view that he has of her um and she's worried that if she were to intervene in some of these other people's affairs it might expose her and she doesn't want to risk the exposure. So it's this back and forth where it's like, she feels like she should do the right thing, but she also does not want to expose herself because she doesn't want, she doesn't want her baby to, to, to hate her, which he's not going to. He's not going to. I, I can't foresee a single thing happening that she can do that's gonna make this man hate her. Um, so she was very hesitant to go help the girl, but you know, conscience got the better of her and she's like look i'm not saying that i'm just saying don't go don't go jumping out there you you follow them stay hidden and i will go get help or whatever i'm like okay but then in my head I, which i almost said out loud i was like maybe you should follow them and he should go get help um but then i'm like okay maybe she's worried that he, on his way to get help he might get kidnapped or stabbed or hurt or something because this poor baby this poor baby yes he's got some fighting skills but he he he, he, he is not very good at defending himself he's his ass always getting hurt so she's like okay maybe the easier job would just for be for him to just follow them down the road and i will risk the danger of you know run, coming across people who might cause harm or something because i know i can fight um so i guess i don't know how far she made it if she made it all the way to the sect that she was looking for or if she came across Shen in the in passing because I feel like if she made it all the way to the sect and was and her way of convincing them to come help was hey I'm one of the devils because as we found out there towards the end her her name and you know description was not on the list of devil names that um, Jing had published so like her identity more or less is safe so in order to get although since Qi Jing's name is on the on the thing I Shen could probably put two and two together and it's like okay well she's been seen with him blah 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 so he could probably put two and two together um I don't know I don't know if anyone else at the sect would really know that she was around Qi Jing or anything yeah anyway, it doesn't matter how far she got to the sect I'm just talking out loud but basically she came across Shen whether that was on her way to the sect or at, 
at the actual manor and you know convince them to come out and like hey i'll let you kill me if you whatever but basically it seems as though they struck up a deal where hey just say also i know where your niece is but hey come help and yeah you can kill me that's fine and that whole interaction after they well i'm jumping all over the place First, let's talk about the fight. The fight between um, Grandma and Grandpa and then old elder leader man. Well, well, that whole diatribe that was going, dialogue going on between them. I was like, Lord Jesus, these shenanigans. Let's go. And then sweet boy started popping out like, hey, no, you stop. I'm, 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 help me come to the righteous side and help me, um, you know, take her back. And grandma and grandpa are like, oh, he's, he wants her to go, him to go the righteous side. <laughs> and so then they go fight him and kill him off screen. I'm like, oh, at least we could have got it. I feel like he's been enough of a character player in this series that we could have at least gotten a death on screen. But, you know, whatever it is what it is. Um, so... Elder Leader is now deceased, and Grandma and Grandpa coming, attacking Waning, just gave him one swift hit to the chest, and he was in a coma for like four days, apparently. Um, one swift hit, I tell y'all. Um, but thankfully, Shen came through, and then Lil Girl was able to just talk some humanity and some sense into all these older people, all these people who, older people who've got these vendettas they're all seeking vengeance they've all got these old wounds generational wounds and she's and little girls little here like look i wasn't even born when none of this shit happened i mean that's what her uncle was saying but like in a nutshell she's like i wasn't born yet um so i i, I, got, I got nothing to do with this um so maybe we should stop all, all this uh, you know because if, if we don't stop the the vengeance and all this kind of stuff somewhere it's just gonna keep going keep going so maybe we should just stop it here and uncle shan was like yeah she wasn't born so maybe we should just let this end with our generation if you haven't if you want vengeance blah blah you can come after me and i'm like well why don't you send him after your brother jing because i feel like he, he he's the one that we should be sending people after right now don't 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 be a martyr right now i mean yes you probably had some role to play but like he's the big bad right now so let's 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 send people after him um <laughs> Um, but yeah, so let them go. That was nice diffusing the situation. And then we had the conversation with, um, Jiang and Shen where she's like, you know, just kill me. And basically letting everyone know, like, yep, I'm the ameth amethyst fiend. Um, I'm not going to hide my identity. And she, under this, at this point, she was unsure whether or not her name was in the, the book of ghosts that was, um, published but she had a feeling and she's like please just don't let him know don't let him know um and it was just a beautiful scene of character building and just her verbalizing everything that we've seen because we've seen her feelings we've seen just the connection that she's built with um, Waning, and we've seen how much she truly does care about him and how much she wants to be with him, even though she might act stubborn on the outside. We've seen we've seen all of the inner workings in her thoughts and her actions, and it was nice to just finally get that verbal confirmation. Like, we know that she cares. We know that she loves this man. We know as the audience, but it's nice to have that, like, punctuated with words so she was just very honest and it was, it was beautiful and you know Jen let him go which I expected um, I expect he was actually gonna you know try and kill her especially when she's out here pouring out her heart and soul like this um, and yeah and then we had the nice little scene there at the end with them and it was cute it was adorable and I just I, I, I love them I love their dynamic and I love I, did, I love them. They're adorable. And I, I hope for good things for them in the future. I'm hoping. I mean, obviously I want the truth to come out, so I would love for her to let him know about her ghostly past, and I'm sure it will come out at some point, because we still got, like, what, six episodes left? Oh, child, we only got, like, six episodes left. We almost done! We've almost made it to the finish line, y'all! 
uh, and then I've got to start Untamed, which I, uh, which I know you guys would tell me is fantastic, and I have no doubt that it's going to be fantastic. Another costume drama. Oh, I'm looking forward to it, but Lord, these Chinese series, they, 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 they love a lengthy season, or lengthy series. They love some 30-something plus episode series, and I'm like, I always end up enjoying myself, but like when I start this series, I look at the number, and I'm like, oh, this feels like such a daunting task. And I'm like, oh, I don't know if I'm ever going to make it to the end of this. But eventually I do. And, and I'm always happy. I'm always happier at the end of it. Um, so the finish line is in sight for this one. And we will be diving into Untamed shortly after I finish this. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm assuming the truth will come out. And I believe in my heart of hearts that Wei Ning will be fine. He'll be fine with it. He might feel a little betrayed or something, but he will be fine because he truly loves her in spite of all of her flaws, in spite of what she might be hiding. Hell, he might already know and just be playing dumb. Who knows? He may not have been asleep that whole damn time. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I love them. And then we had, you know, some nice brief moments with um, Kijing and um, Zishu. Um, we had the opening sequence when he could, neither of them could sleep and it was raining so then they had some wine and they were just having really nice conversations um we got to get a little bit more perspective or a little bit more insight to Zishu um, cause he asked him hey are you ever gonna that was the, I remember when we were under the influence of the drunk like a dream or whatever the whatever it was called and that was the first time you called out my name. Um, are you going to tell me what you were dreaming about? And we got all the, again, just beautiful flashbacks, things we've seen already, but it's just nice to revisit these moments and put them into perspective. Um, and, you know, we got to, you know, see the puppy again, adorable, them playing as kids, cute, 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 cute stuff. Um, kind of scrubbing through the episode to see what else. Um... And then the last bit of stuff we got with them was the whole scene where they were basically visiting the resting place to give their honor to um, their grandmaster. And it started off all well and good, you know, Shingling's out here speaking every and everything any and everything that's in his mind to, to the grandmaster and he's like come on y'all say something and the issue's like sometimes you don't have to say everything out loud sometimes it's better to just keep some things in your heart okay baby boy okay and i love how throughout just the series but especially like the last few episodes is when we've had these three together um both zishu and Kijing are playing the same sort of support role towards each other when it comes to Chingling. Because Chingling is just... He's a curious boy, and he, he he's young, naive, and he just says whatever's on his mind. Just ask questions about any and everything. He's a child, and, you know, some that's how child are. They're, they're curious, they're precocious, and they, they want to know things, this, that, the other, and they don't really know how to read a room. Uh, they don't know... They don't always know when it's not appropriate to ask something or when to just like leave someone be and let them just have their moments, have their secrets. So there's so many times where one of them will say something and then Chingling will respond with in some way, shape or form that hits a nerve, hits an emotional nerve for the other one. And the other one will just like look at Chingling and be like, hey. Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll say something else, diffuse the situation, take it somewhere. Hey, Brad, why don't we go do this? Or, hey, why, why don't you go? Mm -hmm. Or, hey, why don't you... And, like, they both play that role of, like, hey, my baby over here is hurting, and you can't see it right now because you're young and stupid, so I need you to shut up. <laughs> I need you to shut up and stop prying right now. In, in, in a nutshell, is what they're saying. The words behind the words that they're saying. It's Changling, shut up. And I love, <laughs> I love how many times that just happens, and I love that they're both... Um, they're both just so in tune with each other's emotions at this point where they don't have to say words to each other. They can just look at each other's face and be like, oh, okay, that is, they are not, they are not happy. They are not in a good place right now with whatever Chingling just said. So Chingling, shut the fuck up, please. Go, 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 go mow the lawn. I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we have that whole 
um, little prayer session, and he's like, you know, sometimes things are just better left in your heart, and so, you know, just just keep it to yourself, Chingling, <laughs> um, because Chingling's wanting everybody to make this big verbal, you know, he, he wants them to make this big, like, verbal exclamations on what's in their heart, what's in their mind, what they want to say, and obviously, Kijing is... It's still a sore spot for him, and he's not wanting to have this giant public display um, like Kijing, or like Jingling wants him to, so Zishu's like, just just think about it in your brain. Keep, 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 keep it in your heart, baby. It's fine. And he's like, okay, girl, you, you're, doing, you're doing the most right now. You, you, you're going to bother the ancestors. Why, why don't we, we'll come back another day. But what, let's go, let's go back and start training. And Kijing's like, you know what? I, you guys go back first. I, I just, I need to spend some time. I'm like, okay. And then we had that whole just monologue that Kijing was doing. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. His acting is so good. He is such a fantastic actor. And I'm so glad. Like, this is my second series with him. Um... But, and it's such a drastically different character than what I encountered with him in Advance Bravely, but I, he's just so good. He's so good at what he does. And just the way that he, the intensity he has and the way he just brings these words to life with no one around him. Not, there's not another character for him to play off of the emotions. He is just sitting here talking to a rock. And he is he he is just giving everything. It is he's so damn good. Um, but in a nutshell, similar things to what Kijing or um, Jiang was saying, where it's like, yeah, I, I the last how many years I've had venom in my blood, um, hatred, and you know I've risen up to be the king of the devils, and you know I've had nothing but vengeance on my mind, and I basically he wanted to take revenge for his parents' death, and he wanted everybody who was involved to pay, and he's like, you know this this corrupt martial arts world that's full of devils and disguises is all gonna come down burning, blah blah blah. So he's got this mission, he's got this vendetta, and he's he wanted to see the world burn. That was his plan when he first set out before he met. Zishu before all of these other shenanigans happen and then he's like but then someone gave me a bright spot you guys gave me a little spot of brightness and you know I'll forever be in debt for that um, so thank you for that little broad spot of brightness and there were, it just felt like such a it felt like a speech that was signaling that we are entering like the final act of this of this series. Like we are about to, the shit is about to start going down now. Um, with everything that's been going on so far, the fact that Ki Jing's identity is in this book and everybody out here looking for him, and he's given us rousing speech like that. He, the world is gonna end, be bathed in fire, um, and this, that, and the other. But you know, he had this one little bright spot, and he's forever thankful. And you know, he's had this mission this whole time, but now. You know, why why did they give him this path back to humanity or something like something along those lines? And it's just like you you can see the conflict in him because he wants he wants to still exact his revenge, but he also wants to live happily ever after with his baby. He wants to live with his boo thing, and it's just like oh god. So I'm excited to see where these last six episodes take us. Um, I think I mentioned it. Like, a number of times throughout like the last i don't know like 15 episodes i'm like where's prince jin where's prince jin i was expecting to see more of him i felt like he was such a big player in like the first two episodes and now i ain't seen a damn thing about him we got a little flashback of him last time but i think you guys told me that yeah that that's one storyline that just kind of like vanished um they, they've done really really well about maintaining all these other storylines and characters that they in, introduced but that's one that just kind of like yeah he, he wasn't a major player as we thought so um I'm just very interested to see where where this all goes, where where this ends, what 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 shenanigans we're about to get involved in, and we 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 still got we still got beauty ghost floating out there. We got tragic comic ghost floating out there, and you know her mental issues happening and her ties to Jing. We still got court scorpion king and his fine ass 
deliciousness and his beautiful hair and like there's still so much left for us to explore and just so i'm, I'm excited to see where the pieces fall um but i hope you guys enjoyed this reaction if you did don't forget to like comment subscribe share turn on notifications to be notified when all of my shenanigans get posted if there's anything else you'd like me to react to be sure to leave it down in the comments and i'll get to it as soon as i possibly can if you'd like to support the channel in other ways you're more than welcome to join us over on patreon you don't have to but you're more than welcome to if you want to and i'll see you guys in my next video love you And before you guys go, I want to give a huge thank you to everyone supporting me over on Patreon. This channel would not be what it is today without your...